go. Welcome to Geometry. Good morning, guys and girls, 10th, 11th grade. Hope you had a blessed and safe weekend as uh, we are do, we're going through some uncharted waters, unprecedented times. Uh, I hope you are doing well in your geometry. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest visitor coming to us to read our trivia question. The first student to text me through the Remind app, the correct answer will win five points on their next quiz. So you get a five point bonus, make sure to do that. Our winner of last week's um, trivia was Gianna. Uh, the question was, name a triangle that has three sides that are not congruent. The correct answer was a scalene triangle. Great job, Gianna. With that, Gianna got a $5 uh, gift card at Dunkin' Donuts. So uh, this week, it's five-point bonus on your next quiz. So this morning, we're going to get started. We're going to quickly review our checkup. If you have any questions or any problems, we'll quickly go over that. Um, uh, over some of those difficult questions that you might have had and then we'll do a quick review and then get into our new topic uh, this morning all right so well, we're going to pray ask God to give us uh, blessing and give us help and then we'll get started dear Jesus give us wisdom as we begin our geometry class anoint my mind my mouth give me Lord wisdom to explain these rules and theorems and principles the students to work hard and diligently in mastering these and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name Amen. All right, so let's get right into our our topic this morning. Uh, we're going to pick up on page 15 and 16, our quiz from last week, and just quickly go over any of the questions that you might have had. Uh, so let's look at section number two. Find the unknown lengths of the similar triangles, triangle ABC. All right, so we have triangle A, B, C, D, and then we have, all right, we have triangle here, S, T, R, and that's Q, okay? So we had to find the unknown lengths of triangle A, B, C, which is a similar triangle to S, T, R. So quickly we'll just do uh, two and four in years to explain this. This is based on theorem 91. Theorem 91 states, if two triangles are similar, so we're starting off the direction say that these two triangles are similar, then the length of the corresponding altitudes are proportional to the lengths of the corresponding sides. So when we talk about corresponding, we're meaning altitude of AD is over altitude QR, and then whatever side we're looking for would be corresponding. So uh, side AC would be corresponding to uh, side SR, and then side AB would be corresponding to side TR. So let's quickly look at this. Look at number two. We are given AD is five. Um, let's see here. RQ is 10, and then we have AB is 8, and we're looking for, um, sorry, we're looking for RS, all right, RS. Okay, so according to theorem 91, all right, so we have the length of our corresponding altitude. So, all right, in our first ratio always goes our two known values. So we're going to go 10 over 5 is equal to, and then in our second ratio, we're gonna go our unknown, which is SR over, and then the corresponding side would be AB. Once we do our cross multiplications and everything like that, so we're, we have five SR is equal to eight times 10. Remember the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means, all right? And then we have all right, so divide both sides by 5. SR equals, how about we have Gianna give us the answer, and then why don't we have Hannah, you follow up with that. All right, so uh, I've quickly figured that one out. I think some of you may, may have gotten this one wrong. All right, so what do we have, Gianna? Which, what, what do we have, Hannah? Great, we have 16. 16 is the correct answer and so we know um, lot side SR equals 16 very good all right so that's number two let's look at number four all right well let's get down uh, just do number four together same triangles here 
let's just quickly erase. All right, erase here, number four. All right, we have AD, we're looking for AD. Uh, RQ equals 15, all right? And then we have AC is seven and RT is 21. Now, according to theorem 91, again, Similar triangles. If we have similar triangles, then the length of the corresponding altitudes is proportional to the length of the corresponding sides. So my first ratio, let's go uh, our first ratio if we want to do our knowns there. So we can go 21 over 7 is equal to, now what's our corresponding altitudes? How about we have Liam? Good morning, Liam. Hope you had a good weekend. Boy, what a bedhead you got today. All right, here we go. Liam, what is the corresponding altitudes? Good. Okay, QR, which is 15 over AD, is X, so that's our unknown. Now we're simply going to cross multiply here. Again, the product of the extremes is equal to uh, the product of the means. All right, so uh, 21 times AD is 21 AD, and then 7 times 15 is equal to 105. All right, catch calculator, 105 divided by uh, 21 is equal to, how about we have Joey? What do you got, Joe? 105 divided by 21. How about we have Preston? You followed up. This is number four on your checkup. Five is the correct answer. Great job, uh, everyone there. If you have any questions concerning that, if you would like to get anything more specific with that section, just text me through the Remind app, all right? Now, find the geometric means between these terms. Okay, that's the second section on your quiz, just quickly. All right, and so the two terms that are, that are given to us is the, uh, the extremes. So for number five, the two numbers are given to us are 45 and 5, okay? We want to find the geometric means, which we don't know what that is, so we're just going to denote that as x, all right? So here we have, okay, x times x is x squared, and 45 times 5 is 225, well, two, excuse me, all right? Does anyone remember how to get x by itself? All right, how about Josh Baruch? All right, then let's follow up by Emmy. How do we get X by itself? Good, I gotta find the square root of both sides. So X is equal to, what is the square root of 225? Let's have Gabe do that, since Gabe always has a hard time finding that radical sign button on his calculator. Remember, hit second, and then hit that function. There we go, what's the square root of 225? Good job. 15 is the correct answer. All right, we'll do one more. I don't think everyone really had a major problem with this section, but let's do one more together. How about we'll do, uh, that was number five, let's do number 10, all right? So 16 and then nine are geometric means there, all right, 16 and nine. So obviously x times x is x squared, and then 16 times nine is 144, good. Again, I want to get the x by itself. I want to remove that exponent. What do I got to do? How about we have Chris Robb? Good morning, Chris. Hope everything's going well for you. Uh, what do we got there, Chris Robb? I'll wait for you to get it done. Good. Find the square root of both sides. x equals 12. 12 is the geometric mean. All right? If you have any questions, again, contact me there. All right, let's look at the third section here. Simplify these radicals. It seemed like everybody, uh, some did well, had some had, had a little struggle in this situation. Uh, so we're going to quickly do, um, we'll do 14 and 15, all right? So turn to page number uh, 16. We're going to do 14 and 15 together. So 14 is to find the square root of two-thirds. Find the square root of two-thirds. Now, if I have a fraction under the radical sign, remember, I'm going to simply isolate each radical, all right, each, the numerator and the denominator under their own radical sign. So we're going to go 2 over 3. Square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Now, class, remember, we cannot have a radical sign in the denominator, so how do I remove a radical sign from the denominator? All right, how about we have Katie Baruch? Hey, Kate. Getting tired of taking care of Josh, feeding him all these, all these days. 
All right, you look tired today. Get, make sure you get some sleep. All right, Kate, what do we get? How do I get rid of that radical sign of the denominator? Good, excellent. So what I want to do is I want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the radical. Good. So, all right, square root of 2 times the square root of 3 equals the square root of 6. And then 3 times 3, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 equals the square root of 9. All right, now we cannot simplify the square root of 6. That is in its simplest form. So we are going to go the square root of 6 over... Now, what's the square root of 9, Kate? Katie Baruch, finish it up for me. Square root of 9 is 3. Excellent. So my final answer is the square root of 6 over 3. Now, let's look at number 15. Number 15, I think quite a few people had a uh, little issue with number 15. So let's do that one together. All right, we have 4 over the square root of 54. All right, 4 over the square root of 54. Okay. We could do this two ways, all right? And so since 54 is such a big number, we could simplify that into two radicals, okay? Um, or if you want to do 54, you could do that as well. Um, so here's what, I, here's what I'd rather do. I'm going to multiply it by 54, okay? So the numerator is square root of, it's 4 times the square root of 54. Now, I know, listen, whatever 54 times 54 equals, 54 times 54 Whatever that equals, what is the square of that? It's going to be 54. The only difference is there's no radical sign there. All right, so um, very simple there. Now, I do need to simplify up here, and we can simplify this into two factors. Remember, one of those factors must be a perfect square. Okay, Katie's just lucky. Hey, Kate, how's everything going this morning? Are you not your bright eyed and bushy tailed today? All right, so Kate, 54. What are two factors of 54? One of those factors has to be a perfect square. Excellent, good, good. It's 9 and 6. 9 and 6. Okay, so now let's simplify. Okay, what's the square root of 9 class? 3, so 4 times 3, the square root of 6 over 54. What's 4 times 3? Make sure you always multiply your whole numbers, okay? So we have 12 to the square root of 6 over 54. Now, one last thing you need to make sure when you're dealing with fractions, right? Not only do, does our radical need to be in simplest form, but always we must keep our fraction in simplest form. And so here we must reduce, all right? So can we reduce? Can we find a, a number that goes into both 50, uh, 12 and 54, all right? So um, what do we have here? Okay, good. 6 can go in the 12. 6 can go in the 54. So we can go 2 to the square root of 6 over 9. And this is the answer for number, I believe, number 15 in your book. All right, any questions with that? Let's go do that last section now on page 16 here. Find the unknown lengths, unknown lengths of these triangles. Um, this section here, this fourth section, is based on two theorems, okay? So corollary one of theorem 91 and corollary two of theorem 91. So, uh, excuse me, 92, theorem 92, not 91. So let's quickly look at these. We're gonna just do a few of them. I think we're gonna try to do three or four. Uh, make sure everyone has knows which a theorem to apply and how to apply it, okay? So look at number 17, all right, class? So number 17, we have R, T, S. We have our altitude, that's the right angle, and there, okay? This is for number 17. Now, here it is. Now let's see what's given to us, okay? R, Q, here's R, Q. A segment of the hypotenuse is 10. The SQ, another segment of the hypotenuse, is 15. Now, notice in number 17 what we're looking for. We are looking for the altitude, TQ. Now, 
Do you remember? This is a highlight. So you must remember theorem, corollary one of theorem 92. Corollary one of theorem 92 states that the length of the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse, right, of a right triangle is the geometric mean between, between the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. The altitude drawn to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean. All right, so we're looking for the geometric mean. What two letters represent the altitude and the geometric mean? All right, how about we have Gianna? Hey, G, great job with last week's trivia question. All right, TQ is the geometric mean. Very good. Okay, between the segments of the hypotenuse. So if this is the geometric mean, then what would be our first term and our last term? Our first term and our last term, very good, would be 15 over 10. Now, remember, it doesn't matter where we stick this, right? Because the commutative property of multiplication, 10 times 15 is the same as 15 times 10. So it does not matter in which order you have your segments of your hypotenuse. Does that make sense to everyone? Nod your head. I can't tell if you're nodding, but... I'm sure you're, I'm sure you are. Okay, so here we go. The product of the extremes times the product of the means. So we have 10 times 15 is 150. TQ times TQ would be TQ squared. How do I get the rid of the exponent? We find the, the square root of both sides. And so we have TQ is equal to the square root of 150. Now, the directions, this is where many of you went wrong. You did not properly read your directions. It states, leave radicals in their simplest form. So if this answer has a radical, I must leave it in its simplest form. Now, we can break up 150. What two factors of 150? One has to be a perfect square. I'll wait for a moment. Does four go into 150 evenly? No. Okay. Does 5 go into 150 evenly? Yes or no? Okay. All right. So does 6 go into 20, 150 evenly? Yes, it does. Very good. 6 and 25. So is 25 a perfect square class? Yes, it is. So 5 to the square root of... Six, and that is the answer for number 17. So if your answer has a radical, leave the radical and make sure you draw that in simplest form, okay? All right, I think I have, let's see, um, number 19. Number 19, another triangle that we, uh, that we did here. So number 19, there's our altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. We have triangle A, B, C, D, okay? All right, find the lengths of the sides, okay? So let's look what's given to us. AD is 7, BD is 8, and we are looking for the altitude. Again, corollary 1 of theorem 92 class, if we have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse, then the altitude is the geometric mean between the lengths of the segment. Say it with me again. Say it with me, all right? Turn your pages back. Oh, wait a second. Corollary 1 of theorem 92. Come on, get them out. Turn, turn, turn. Read it with me now together, okay? The length of the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean between the length of the segments of the hypotenuse. So, okay, what's our geometric mean? The altitude is the geometric mean. <laughs> Okay, between the legs of the hypotenuse. So if you want to go, all right, again, it does not matter which order. So multiply our, our extremes. We have 8 times 7 is 56. CD times CD is CD squared. Find the square root of both sides. CD equals the square root of 56. Can 56 be broken down further? Is that radical in its simplest form? 
We can break it down further. Very good. So what two factors? Uh, so let's quickly look. Okay. Does 4 go into 56? How about we have Dave Weber? Good morning, Dave. All right, what is... What do we have here, Dave? What is the two factors? Does four go into 56? Get your calculator out. Let me know. And then how about we have Caleb Tomlinson? You follow up with the answer. Get your calculator out, Caleb. Let's go. Wake up. Here we go. Right. Good. It's four and 14. Square root of four is two to the square root of 14. Very good. And that's our correct answer for number 19. Number 19. All right, let's look at number 19. Let's see, what would we do? Which one would we do there? All right, let's look at number 19 here. Number 19. Okay, we're just quickly going over our soft test here. Number 19. Okay, number 19 here. All right, we have AC is 8. AD. We don't know. And A, B is 12. Now, this is a little different setup, right? We're looking for the legs. Wait, the geometric mean, the altitude is nowhere to be found. We're not looking for the altitude. We're looking for the legs. This leads us to corollary 2 of theorem 92. This is how we tell the difference. Corollary 2 of theorem 92. Okay, so what does corollary 2 state? If the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the length of each leg is the geometric mean. The length of each leg. So, okay, we're only given one leg, so what's the geometric mean? Very good. It's 8. Now, read the rest of that with me. Between the length of the hypotenuse... And the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. Between, okay, the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent. There it is. We're looking for AD. So, 12x equals 64. Divide, oops, excuse me. All right, divide both sides by 12. We want to get x by itself. x equals, notice there's no radical in this problem. So x equals 5.33, 5.33 number 19. All right, any, any further questions with that? Okay, now let's look at one more. Uh, we're going to go to number 23. A lot of people got this wrong, number 23. We'll do that together, and then we'll move on in our section here, okay? So let's draw this. Okay, we have triangle M, N, O, right angle there. And then we have an altitude drawn here, and we call this letter P. And that is the right angle. So number 23. Number 23 here we are looking at MO is, that's a leg. Oh, sorry. MP. MP is 13. MN is 21. And we are looking for NO. We are looking for NO. Now, in this case here, okay, what is our geometric mean? What is the geometric mean? All right, we're, obviously we're not looking for the altitude, so this would be corollary two of theorem 92. Okay, so our geometric mean would be the length of the leg, right? The length of the leg. So we don't know what that is, so we're gonna go NO equals NO. Now, here it is, follow with me. In theory, corollary two of theorem ninety-two, it's the length of the leg. The length of the leg is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse. Okay, what's the length of the hypotenuse? Twenty-one. Good. And the segment adjacent to that leg. What is the segment adjacent? So this is the segment we're looking for. It's twenty-one minus thirteen, which is eight. So NO squared equals, and then uh, 21 times 8 is, 
168. And O equals, what's our final answer there? Oh, it is time for our special guest today. Our special guest is our birthday boy today. It's Gabriel Penichetti. Yeah. Birthday. Gabe is 16 years old today, and he's got our question of the day. So here we go. Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gabriel. All right. Happy birthday to you. Here we go. All right, Gabe. Read our question nice and loud. What do you call an angle whose vertex is at the center and whose sides are radii? One last time. What do you call an angle whose vertex is at the center and whose sides are radii? All right, first person to get me back on the Remind app, we have uh, five points to your next quiz. Five points to your next quiz. Let's give it up for Gabriel. Happy birthday, Gabe. All right, good job, good job. All right, so now we're let's, let's just quickly finish this problem here. All right, so we're finishing number 20, uh, 23 here, okay? So I, I said 168. That's... 21 times 8 is, is it 21? Did I mess up here? Yeah, 168. Okay, I'm right. Now, let's find the square root of that. All right? We got to draw radicals in the simplest form. Okay, now what two factors go into 168, one of which has to be a perfect square? So I always start off with my perfect squares. So let's start off with 4. That's our first perfect square there. Can 4 go into 168? How about we have Brandon? Before we go to 168, Brandon, get your calculator out and let me know. Good. It goes, yes, it does. It goes evenly. All right. How, how many times? 4 and 42. Excellent work. The square root of 4 is 2. To the square root of 42, that is the correct answer. All right. If you have any further questions, there's your quiz there. I know some people had some questions. I wanted to address those questions. Now, for the last for the last 15 minutes of our class, uh, we're going to quickly go over to our pages today. Uh, we did the Pythagorean theorem. Let's not forget, if we're looking for the lengths of the sides of a right triangle, well, we use the Pythagorean theorem, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now, <clears throat> on Friday, we looked at two special cases of right triangles. We did the 30-60 right triangle and the isosceles right triangle theorem. Again, both highlights. Better be studying your highlights, making sure your handbooks are filled out. Very important, okay? Um, and so to find for the 30-60 right triangle, uh, that's theorem 96, page number 23, the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg, and the longer leg is the square root of 3 times the length of the shorter leg. So the hypotenuse for a 30 60 right triangle, okay? If we're going to find the lengths of the sides, the hypotenuse is 2 times the length of the shortest side, and then for the second leg, we have the shortest side times the square root of 3. That's for a 30-60 right triangle. And then for the isosceles right triangle uh, theorem, all right, you'll find that on page 25. You'll find that on page 25. And since the isosceles right triangle, both legs are equal, uh, then what we're going to do, all we got to do there is find, is the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times either leg. So hypotenuse is the square root of 2 times either leg. And this could be either one, leg A or leg B, all right? So uh, that, that's what we did on Friday. We're going to continue that today. We're going to put this in some application on page 27. So uh, get your books out. We're going to do page 27 and 28 together, 27 and 28, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's look at number one, okay? Look at number one here. We have A, B, C, D. Okay, we have a diagonal there. What is the length of the diagonal of a square? What is the length of the diagonal of a square, A, B, C, D, if A, B is 7? Now, class, what do we remember about a square? 
All right, how about we have Emmy? Hey, Em, how's, how's it going? Hope you're having a good time, spending all the time with your brother, Joe. Have, I'm sure he's not getting on your nerves at all. Uh, em, what do we got there? What do we know about a square? A square is a rectangle, right, with four congruent sides. Excellent. So, also, what do we know about a, right, uh, uh, a square? It's got four right angles. Excellent. So then basically, what do we have formed here? We have an isosceles right triangle. It's got two congruent sides. How do I find the length of the hypotenuse? It is A, right? The square root of two times either leg. So we would simply go for um, number one, all right? So we would have C equals seven to the square root of two. Now, let's reference the directions real fast. Do we leave our answers in radical form or do we leave them in decimals? Let's say here. It says, use a calculator with a square root function and round off answers to two decimal places. So we want to find the square root of two. Once you find the square root of two, you want to multiply that by seven and you should get for your answer, 9.90 will be your answer for number one. All right, let's do number three together. Let's do number three. We're simply using our special cases, 30, 60 right triangle, isosceles right triangle. Let's look at number three, an iso oh, isosceles trapezoid, A, B, C, D, with altitudes A, E, and D, F, okay? All right, that's not too good there. Okay, we have an isosceles trapezoid here, all right, A, B, C, D. We have an altitude here that is E, an altitude here that is F, all right. Now, we know this is an isosceles trapezoid. What do we know about an isosceles trapezoid? All right, we know about isosceles triangles, okay. So what does that say? All right, we know this is going to be 10, all right, there's going to be 5, we know that this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees. Now, if that's a right angle, right, this has to be 45 degrees, this has to be 45 degrees. Now, class, what's the question here? Find the length of one of the legs if AD equals 10 and BC equals 26. I don't know where I got 5 from. All right, so... BC is 26. Find the length of one of the legs. Okay, now what do we need to do? If, remember, if this is all 26, then I need to find the length of one leg, okay? So how do we find the length of one that leg here? Let's simply go 26 minus 10. What's 26 minus 10, class? All right, 26 minus 10, all right? Let's go here. Let me show you. 26 minus 10 equals... All right, we just want to find one leg. So I just isolated one section there, okay? All right, so 26 minus 10, all right? So that equals 16. Divide both sides by 2. BE is equal to 8. Once I know one of my legs, I now can just simply go 8 to the square root of, oops, to the square root of 2. Find the square root of 2, times that by 8, and you should get 11.31. 11.31 there. All right, let's do... Time to do one more. Let's do one more together. Let's do number five together. Number five, okay? All right, you'll see that down in your books. Number five. If a soccer player along the sideline, 25, 25 meters from the end of the soccer field, kicks the ball into the goal at an angle measuring 45, how far is he from the goal? All right, so... Okay, let's just say there's our soccer player there. All right, he kicks the ball. We know he's 
All right? So he's 25 meters there from there. All right, this is 45 degree angle. We have a right angle there. This is the hypotenuse, okay? So we just simply find how far did, did he have to kick the ball? How far? So what special case am I using? Since this is 45 degrees, we know this is 45 degrees. I'm using the isosceles right triangle theorem. So all I gotta do is 25 times the square root of 2. 25 times the square root of 2, all right, is 35.36. All right, so I want you to do for homework, I want you to do page 27. I want you to do the evens, all right? Evens 2, 4, and 6. Evens 2, 4, and 6. And then <clears throat> be prepared for your checkup. We're going to do the checkup tomorrow. And so uh, make sure that is all caught up and all your work is done, all right? So I will see you tomorrow. Have a blessed and safe day. Goodbye, class.